Hey everyone, Brooks with Digital Cloud Training. Today, we're gonna do something kind of fun. We're gonna use artificial intelligence to help us solve a problem. In fact, not only solve a problem, but learn about AWS. We're gonna go through how we can use Google Bard, GitHub Copilot, and Amazon Code Whisperer to detect any EC2s in a particular region have CPUs that went above 80% utilization in the past five days. Now, I want to approach it from this frame of mind. I want to approach it from somebody who knows a little bit about Python, knows a little bit about AWS, but not enough to get the job done. We'll use AI to help us solve the problem. And then we'll also use it as an opportunity to learn. As a matter of fact, if the AI system does what I expect it to do, the very first line of code is actually going to be a learning opportunity for us. However, that said, stick around to the very end of the video, or at least watch the whole video, because I'm going to give you a caveat at the very end that is important to consider when working with AI systems. So with that said, I'm going to jump over to my browser and ask Bard, hey, how can we actually accomplish this job? So I'm over in Bard, and I'm going to do a little bit of prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is this thing where we're going to have to ask the AI system to give us something, but the problem is it's going to give us exactly what we asked for. So we've got to make sure we tell it exactly what we expect. In this case, we're going to say to it, hey, look at all the EC2s in our region, check the CPU utilization, and tell me if any have gone over 80%. I'm going to type that into the prompt now. Okay, so by prompt, I need a Python script that will iterate over all of the EC2 instances in an AWS region, and alert me if any of them have a CPU utilization greater than 80% in the past five days. Fun thing is going on here, you'll notice that greater is underlined. That's actually the AI system from Grammarly, something I have installed on my local computer, letting me know mm, that's probably not the best language. Now, when you're working with AI systems, the words that you use matter because that's gonna really, really, really affect how the system's gonna work. So sometimes having things like Grammarly to check your English to make sure it's really where it should be before you enter that prompt can usually yield much better results. So if we take a look at what Grammarly is saying to us, it says greater, how about more significant? Okay, that's good enough. And then it doesn't like this line. So it wants to make CPU utilization. Okay, if any CPU utilization is more significant than 80%. All right, let's run this and see what we get. Now, the thing to remember when this is actually running, if you make a mistake, you can always go back and change what you put in. In this case, with Bard, you can always go back to your original prompt, hit the edit button, change it, and then run update and see what it actually kicked out. Also, with most good AI systems, there's also this ability to look at other drafts. That is, it actually came up with a couple of ideas on how to approach the problem that you gave it. And so it's got some other things it can show you. In this case, we're going to go with what we've got. Let's see what we have. First of all, import Bodo 3. This is what I was talking about. The very first line of our script really opens up a learning opportunity for us. What is Bodo 3? Bodo 3 is the Software Development Kit, or SDK, for working with AWS. So when you see an AI system like start to solve a problem, you're looking at it like, what does that mean? Go do some research on that right away, because generally that'll tell you or indicate to you the technology that could be used to solve your problem. So it's imported Bodo 3. It's going to get all the instances that are available. That's this line right here. Then go through all the instances using a for loop. If you know a little bit of Python, maybe you don't understand for loops, this would be a great place to go, okay, what is a for loop? Look in Python, see how you can use that to iterate over a library or an array or a dictionary of values to find out more information about each element in that particular collection. In this case, we're going over all the instances that we found in a particular AWS region. So it goes through, checks for utilization greater than 80%, and if it finds one, it prints it out for us. Okay, not too bad, Bard. Thanks a lot. But now let's take this code, let's throw it over to Visual Studio Code and see what GitHub Copilot can do to improve it. So I'm inside Visual Studio Code now. Notice the very thing that's up right now. It's actually saying, hey, do you want some help doing something? Copilot's already stepping in and asking for it. In this case, you simply do a command I and you can start putting in a prompt, just like you did with Bard. So in fact, without even using Bard, I could have started here. But just for fun to mix things up, I started with bar. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and paste in our code. And let's start seeing what we can do with it. Now, this will go to that caveat at the very end. When I look at this code, one of the issues I have is it's just a script, basically. I want this to be in its own function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Copilot, hey, 
can you take all the code that you see here, minus that import, and turn it into its own function? Check this out. I highlight the code, Command I, and up comes the Copilot prompt. Just like with the BARD system, we're now going to be doing some prompt engineering. So in this case, I'm going to tell it, please put the code that you see here into its own function called check CPU utilization. So I've got my prompt finished. Please encapsulate this code into a function called check CPU utilization. I hit enter and watch what it does for us. In this case, Copilot is giving us a chance to see what it wants to change. In this case, it wants to put in Let's go ahead and do the accept right here. This def check CPU utilization. We could always undo this, do a control Z and back this out. But what I want you to notice is, is that it did exactly what I needed, but then repeated it. This is one of the issues when you're using a tool like this. Check to see what it actually did. Yes, it put all of this and I can roll it up into this section right here, but it actually pushed all the other code down to the bottom. So in this case, I simply delete it, open this back up, and everything looks good. Be careful when using these sorts of systems because they'll automatically do things that you may not have expected. Okay, so we're back on track. Everything looks good. Now the next problem. Again, we may not know exactly what we're doing with Python, but we think we need a main function. And in fact, I'm going to use Copilot to do exactly that with just a little bit of prompt engineering. Check it out. So I'm going to do a command I. I'm going to say, please insert a main function into this code. Very simple, very fast, no big deal. And you can see what it did once again. It actually put this right down here, but this time it caught it. That's the thing with these systems that I met. I wanted to show you that error earlier, where it actually took our function, moved it over, called it into its own definition then, but then took the code that was there and just popped it to the bottom. Check this out. In this case, it was a lot slicker about it. It took and just added this to the function. This is exactly what we want. So now when I choose accept, I don't get a doubling. I get just the extra code that I needed. Okay, great. We're really going in the right direction. Except now I've got a little bit of a problem. That is this. I'm trying to solve the problem. An engineer comes to me and they say something like this. Hey, we got an SNS queue. It's called a uh, high CPU utilization alert. I think I'll email it to you. Anyway, when you get done with your code, if you would send any alerts you've got to that particular SNS queue, we would appreciate it. Okay, what did that even mean? I don't know, actually I do know. What they want you to do is, is within this code, instead of printing, like you see on line 35 right there, instead they want that message to be thrown to SNS or simple notification service. SNS is just a really simple way of sending out messages. It could be emails, it could be to SQS. It's really a host of things that SNS can talk to. In this case, it's going to be an email. I have no clue how to do that. So let's ask Copilot what it can do. So with these two lines highlighted, I'm going to hit command I again and basically just ask Copilot what I need to have done. Let me pause here while I typed in this prompt. Okay, for right here, I kept it simple to see what it would do. In this case, I'm just saying, please replace these two lines of code with a call to an SQS queue called alert high CPU. Let's run it and see what happens. Ah, things look quite a bit different this time. Notice how we now have a split screen to work with. What we're seeing is this, on the left, in this particular box where I'm moving my cursor, this is what the code was originally. That is just a moment ago. These are the changes on the right that Copilot is suggesting. Let's take a look at what's there. Now, when you see things highlighted in green, that means we're going to add it. If it was highlighted in red, that means we're going to remove it. I think we're going to see a lot of greens here. Maybe two reds, but mostly greens. First thing right here, SQS Boto 3 dot client. This is how you can get Python, to, again, using the Boto 3 library to talk to SQS. Let's scroll down. And then here's the catch. Notice it read it out this print line. This print line right here is going to be removed and replaced with this SQS send message that you can see right there. Hmm. Not bad. Let's accept these changes, see what we've got. 
and that looks pretty good. The thing I want you to think about is this. With just a little bit of knowledge of AWS and a little bit of knowledge of Python, we actually have a pretty slick script coming along here. Something that would actually be a great starting point for a project. So with this done, let's go to our last tool that we want to explore, and that's Amazon Code Whisper. Code Whisper is another plugin that you could take advantage of. In fact, let me bring up the bottom of my screen here so you can see it a little bit better. I've sort of hidden it so you wouldn't be taken aback by all the things that happen down here at the bottom of my screen. But Code Whisper is located right here. Now, you will need an AWS Builder ID, which you can go out to the website, log in, and create one. And then once you've done that, you can download the Code Whisper extension into Visual Studio Code and take advantage of it. I'm going to click on it, and then I have some options up at the top. For example, Auto suggestion is currently running. You could pause it, run a security scan, open code references, or learn. That's a cool feature. How do I do a thing? How do I change this? What do I do? So you can see, hopefully, this between using Bard, between using Copilot, and now that we're inside Code Whisper, there's a lot of opportunities to learn on your own how to do these things. Again, I'm going to say a caveat at the end of the video about that, but for the most part, this is a really slick way forward. Now, in this case, I don't want to use anything other than have it to run a security scan. Off it runs. Now, Code Whisperer is not the fastest thing in the world. As you saw, Bard was quite quick. GitHub Copilot was very quick. This is a little bit slower. I'm not sure why. It's not for CPU utilization. I think it has to be a lot of chatter going back and forth between my system and Amazon. That's fine. Zero issues found. The only thing I found was this Import Bodo could not be resolved. It's a pretty common thing when you're working with Python. You can effectively ignore it. But in this case, nothing was found. This code's in really good shape. Just close this out, bring our code up so you can see it a little better. I'll give you an example of something you can do if you're interested. Take a code like this, and instead of just leaving it as it is, go in and put in an access key or a secret access key and watch the way Code Whisperer reacts. Know that that's a secret, and then warn that's something you need to deal with. By the way, if you want to know more about stopping things like secrets from getting into your source code in GitHub, check out our other video that we have available on how you can implement secret scanning inside GitHub. But for this video, I think we're done. We have a really good piece of code here. This would actually operate just fine, do everything that we expected. We could take this as the beginning of a project, maybe give it to the developer and say, hey, what do you think? Not bad. And they'd probably look at it and go, yeah, this is not bad. And again, we just started with a little bit of AWS and a little bit of Python knowledge, and we could get here by leveraging these AI tools. Now, the caveat. You're going to need to be careful with these tools because they can make mistakes. They can make serious mistakes. Usually nothing is going to cause you a lot of trouble or anything, but give you a solution that doesn't work. At worst, a solution that embarrasses you when you try to show it to somebody else. So first and foremost, get your education, get your skills, go after your certifications so that you know what the things like what is SQS for or EC2 are the virtual machines that are available inside Amazon for running code. Get that basic knowledge. Then when you're using things like Bard, Code Whisper, or GitHub's Copilot, you're in a much better place to detect when an error has happened. So with that said, jump in there, grab these tools, see what you can do with them. Make sure they don't make any mistakes on you though. And I hope you have a lot of fun working with AI tools and building systems inside AWS. See you next time. Mm -hmm.